You guys already know that North Naperville Autos is the number one dealer of used cars in the Chicagoland area, but they are now offering shipping on all of their online purchases. That's right, if you buy a car at North Naperville Autos online, it'll be shipped directly to your front door. What's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2012 Mazda 6 i Touring. Up front is a 2.5 liter inline four and down below is a six speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this year Mazda 6 for a couple of reasons. First of all, I recently drove a 2017 Mazda 6 that you could see on the channel. And if you want a in memoriam of the Mazda 6, please go check out that one because as you might know, the Mazda 6 has recently been discontinued. But the second reason is the fact that I've driven a 2009 in black. However, that had the V6. This is only the four cylinder. So we'll be talking about some of those differences a little bit later on. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, zachpradle.com, where you can check out my stickers. I have a retro sticker pack available as well as a big friggin' bottle test sticker. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form and you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel but let's get back to that 2.5 liter under the hood well I personally like it and so driving this car with the smaller four-cylinder do I miss the v6 a little bit a little tiny bit yes because the nice thing about the v6 is that it has two extra cylinders that help out at all times of the day, whether you're down low in the revs or up high. The issue with just adding a turbo like they later did, the more performance version was the turbo, is that down low, the turbo isn't spooling, so you're not making any more power. The V6 is very noticeable down low, so if you do a lot of city driving, you're really gonna notice the V6 versus the inline four. That being said, I still like the inline four. I think it's still an adequate fine amount of power for a vehicle like this. You're not gonna be a speed demon, but it also doesn't feel underpowered. It doesn't feel unsafe. And that's all I really look for. The other thing to note about these four cylinders is that I also recently drove last fall a Mazda CX-5 with the same exact engine that had over 200,000 miles on it. So in my research from owning these engines and driving a lot of these engines, I have concluded that they are pretty, pretty reliable, at least up till 200,000 miles. However, that's not to say that the V6 isn't because the V6 version that I reviewed had 209,000 miles. So Mazda in this era was making some fairly decently reliable vehicles as long as it's not a CX-7 transmission. Speaking of which, like I said, paired to its six-speed automatic transmission, it shifts fine. It does the job. I have no complaints with it. Last but not least, the Mazda 6 is front-wheel drive, and unfortunately, there was no all-wheel drive offered here in this body style of Mazda 6. The very first generation Mazda 6 had something called the Speed 6, which was a manual transmission to all-wheel drive turbo Mazda 6. However, we never got a second generation of the Speed 6, which is a little sad. Not a little, a lot sad. Really, really sad. With that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a bunch of gauges. On the left is my fuel and tachometer. On the right, I have my speedometer and coolant temperature. And in the center, I just get like what gear I'm in, little readout from my odometer and outside temperature. On the steering wheel, on the left, I have my volume, skip track, phone options, and voice commands. And on the right, I have my cruise control settings. The outside of the steering wheel is wrapped in this hard leather, this hard plasticky leather, which has aged fairly over time. However, the Mazda badge in the center of the steering wheel isn't all chipped off. With most of the vehicles I drive from this era from Mazda, the stick-on chrome they use for the logos is usually scratched off by this point. Off to the left, I have traction control on and off and my info button as well as my trunk popper. And on the door, I have my lock and unlock, power mirrors, and power windows. Moving into the center, I have a little digital readout. Then I have two climate control vents and a hazard switch. And this is the stock radio. Now the other Mazda 6 from this generation that I drove had an aftermarket radio where you could watch DVDs. 
This is the stock factory radio. Looks a little bit like the RX-8 radio, a little bit like the Mazda Speed 3 radio. Of course, that's from the same era. And overall, it does what I want it to do. Then I do have climate controls, temperature to the far left, fan speed in the middle, where to send it off to the right. Then I do get a 12 volt outlet, little cubby here, and the shifter itself. This is an older style of shifter from Mazda. However, it fits with the vehicle and I don't really have any complaints with it. It is a jigsaw style shifter to kind of have to move it all around in order to get it in and out of gear. But Mazda didn't have a whole lot of money in this era, so that's fine. Then we do have the handbrake and cup holders that you can open. So we will do a big frame bottle test. And if you really jam it in there, it kind of bows out the edges of the cup holder. You could kind of make it fit. But for the sake of being wholesome, I'm gonna have to fail the Mazda 6 on the big friggin' bottle test. It just, it doesn't fit right. Even removing that little bridge, it won't fit. <laughs> Now we gotta talk about the seats. The seats are cloth and black, as the rest of the car is black as well. And honestly, the seats are decently comfortable. They're a little stiff, a little base model E. The Touring, or the I Touring, is actually about the mid-range of the Mazda 6. The Sports are the lower end, and of course, Grand Touring are up at the top. So, not the best, not the worst. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats, so let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2012 Mazda 6 i Touring, and this is where you really want the Mazda 6. What I mean by that is that at the time, Mazda was offering the Mazda 3 and the Mazda 6. That's kind of always been their two flagship sedans. Mazda 3 being a compact, Mazda 6 being the bigger one. And of course there was the Mazda 5, which was a minivan, blah, 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 don't worry about that. The Mazda 6 and Mazda 3 feel very similar in a lot of ways, but this is a distinguishing factor of the Mazda 6. So much more room back here than you would find in a Mazda 3. Headroom is pretty good. I can feel my hair starting to hit the ceiling, but I do have the haircut of a 12 year old. So to be expected there, my knees when I sit normally, not hitting the seat in front of me. Now that I've slouched down a little bit, I have plenty of headspace, plenty of room back here. This is where the Mazda 6 really makes itself known in the back seat. I do have this center console here two cup-ish holders, but they're very small. Nothing really exciting. Let's go take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, around the back of the 2012 Mazda 6, I popped it from inside. And of course we have floor mats so we don't dirty them up for the next owner, but plenty of space back here. Nothing really too interesting or crazy. However, it is a big full-size sedan. You could almost fully lay down in here. I mean, the amount of things you could fit in here is just fantastic and something that I think some modern cars are really missing, but just look at how far in it goes. Really, really cool, and this is also another great attribute of the Mazda 6. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and I don't know if I really like the look of this Mazda 6. I think it's really bubbly, sort of has that smiley face up at the front, and I don't know, I'm just not a big, big fan of Mazda styling from the late 2000s, early 20 teens. Same goes for the Mazda 3. As much as I love that generation of Speed 3, I think it's a little too happy, a little too Joker face for my liking. But with all that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts here on the Mazda 6. Well, this has the 2.5 liter in it. This is the Duratec engine, which is actually a Ford engine. During this period, Mazda was still mostly owned by Ford. So a lot of their vehicles are equipped with Ford engines, like the bigger V6 offered here in the Mazda 6 was actually out of the Ford Explorer. And so this also shares an engine with the Ford Fusion. But unfortunately, they made a Ford Fusion with all wheel drive. They didn't do an all-wheel drive Mazda 6. So you have to look at this as mostly a Ford product. Yes, there is that Mazda M slapped on the front, but in all reality, it is a Ford. But being a Ford isn't always the worst thing in the world. These cars are reliable. They're spacious in the back like I just showed you. They're not the prettiest things in the world, but my uncle has taken one of these well over 220,000 miles with relatively no issues. He bought a new car recently, but just because the car was just old, it didn't have any problems. It was just out of date. However, that car still exists and still gets use every once in a while. It's just now the backup car and not the primary car. These cars are fantastic and I'm happy to report that being a Mazda fan, owning several Mazdas myself, it's always good to see that the brand has had some consistency over the last couple of years. And that's really true here with the Mazda 6. I miss the V6, 
I would prefer the V6 option. However, unless you're trying to secure a seat in Formula One, you don't really need the V6. It's definitely nice to have, but not necessary. Overall, I really don't have any major complaints about this generation of Mazda 6. And that's a good sign because I love complaining. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to North Naperville Autos for letting me take out their Mazda 6. This is absolutely fantastic. North Naperville Autos is absolutely awesome. They offer financing as well as nationwide shipping and they are Carfax certified. So please go to them if you're looking for a new vehicle. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.